morning, Your Honor. William Kirk on behalf of Mr. Smith. I'll hand forward a statement of rights and arraignment, and we'll acknowledge receipt of the. Good morning. Before we get started, let's let's um, formally call the case. And I just wanted to discuss um, the media that's present. Um, so go ahead and. Thank you, Your Honor. The State of Washington versus Smith on cause five ZC zero zero three zero three seven. Joe Scoble for the state. Defendant is present, out of custody, represented by counsel, Mr. Kirk. This matter is on uh, before Your Honor for the purposes of arraignment. However, as a perfunctory matter, media is in the room. I believe it's in your discretion whether or not to allow the recording of this proceeding. Right. Um, this is governed by General Rule 16. It's presumed that the media is allowed access, and I am granting permission for them to be here uh, for this arraignment. Um, however, I am inquiring of the parties if there is any basis for any restrictions to be placed on uh, the recording. We're not requesting any at this point, Your Honor. None from the state, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. So um, why don't we, let me pull up the calendar first. Okay, why don't we go ahead and proceed with the arraignment. Thank you, Your Honor. This is uh, before Your Honor for the purposes of an arraignment on one count of driving under the influence greater than 0.15 and one count of hit and run unattended property. So it is forwarding its demand for jury trial. We'll acknowledge receipt of that, Your Honor. Okay, counsel. <coughs> Your Honor, we'll acknowledge receipt of the complaint. We'll waive formal reading. We ask the court to enter a plea of not guilty to both counts and we stipulate the probable cause for the limited purpose of setting conditions today. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Could you please state your true and correct name for the record? Uh, Michael James Smith. And what is a good mailing address? Your Honor, one special request. Uh, we would request that the court order the media not to republish Mr. Smith's mailing address that he just gave the court. Yes, that seems appropriate in this case. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Smith, um, you are here for an arraignment on a charge of driving under the influence of alcohol and duty on striking property. Both of these are alleged to have occurred on September 26, 2015. Um, I will acknowledge receipt of the state's demand for a jury trial. I have before me your rights at arraignment. Is this your signature on that document? Yes, it is. You understand your rights at arraignment? Yes, I do. I have reviewed the declaration for probable cause. That's the statement of facts that support the filing of the charges. Uh, the court is making a finding of probable cause to support both counts. Um, and the court will enter a not guilty plea on your behalf to both charges. I will first hear from the state regarding their recommendation for uh, conditions of release. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you can see by the probable cause declaration, this was a particularly brazen DUI, including open container, collision, defendant driving on flat tires. Uh, based on that, the state does have some concerns for the state of the community. Uh, however, the defendant does not have any prior DUIs. The state is asking for a personal recognizance release, standard DUI conditions, and the impositions of the electronic home monitoring system with REAC or sobriety. Thank you. Counsel. Well, well, Your Honor, it would appear that the state's request does not really rise to the level of personal recognizance when you're asking for a person to be placed on EHM. As the court is abundantly aware, Court Rule 3.2 uh, requires the court to uh, structure the least restrictive means necessary to ensure that Mr. Smith is neither a danger to community safety nor or that he will appear for court. Obviously, as the state's already enunciated, Mr. Smith has absolutely no criminal history. And while certainly the allegations are serious, and we seriously don't, we don't mean to uh, minimize them here, uh, we do believe that the uh, a PR with standard DUI conditions of release, in addition to abstinence, would be best suited in ensuring that both the community is safe and that Mr. Smith appears for all future court dates. He certainly poses no flight risk whatsoever. He's gainfully employed. He's a local member of the community. And he certainly plans on appearing for all future court dates. Your Honor, if I may, I, I, I did not put on the record earlier, I believe it was evident um, by the probable cause declaration, but I will state for the record, the breath alcohol concentration in this case is alleged to be at point, a two, point, two, point two one nine, which is significantly high. And uh, PR and standard conditions would be grossly inappropriate for this DUI. Okay. And Your Honor, I would only say that those are only allegations at this point. The court is, is certainly can structure conditions of release. That will protect the community and ensure that Mr. Smith appears. And if anything, if the court really wants to protect the community, the imposition of an interlock divorces any subsequent use of alcohol from the activity of driving and is far more appropriate and less restrictive than putting an ankle bracelet on Mr. Smith. Okay. 
Mr. Smith, I have reviewed your criminal case history. This is your first encounter with the criminal justice system. However, the declaration for determination of probable cause causes me great concern, uh, not only for the safety of the community, but for your safety as well. Um, this was a, a serious accident with an extremely high BAC level. Um, I think um, releasing you on your promise to appear back in court is appropriate in this case. Um, however, I'm going to place the following conditions uh, to assure the safety of the community. And um, that will be uh, you are to have law-abiding behavior, not to have any alcohol or drug-related offenses. You are not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol during the pendency of this case. Not allowed to possess or consume any mind-altering drugs, that includes marijuana, unless you have a prescription from a doctor. You're not allowed to drive a motor vehicle with a BAC in excess of zero, zero. You're not to refuse a breath or blood test if requested by law enforcement, ordered by the court, or probation. So I am going to place you on pretrial supervision. Um, that way they can monitor, um, because of the hit and run, the, the flight, um, and the high BAC level, I want them to monitor you and to, um, they'll be authorized to conduct UAs upon reasonable suspicion that you're consuming any alcohol or mind-altering drugs. That won't be a problem, Your Honor. Um, I'm also going to impose the ignition interlock device. So should you choose to drive during the pendency of this case, you have to have an ignition interlock device installed on your vehicle, and you need to provide proof within one week of today's date. Um, if you choose not to drive in lieu of the ignition interlock device, you can file a declaration of non-driving and just choose not to drive during the pendency of this case. Um, you're not um, to drive a motor vehicle unless you have a valid license and insurance. And I think all of those conditions will assure the safety of the community. Um, do you have any questions regarding any of these conditions? We have no questions. Okay, Mr. Smith, you need to report uh, to probation after this hearing. That's on the sixth floor. Thank you, Your Honor. The next court date is November 13th at 8.45 a.m. and then 603. This is what is this? This is an easy signature here. Yeah, they, they're going to superimpose it onto the order. Yes. 